We know you've heard of Venus flytraps, the most famous of all carnivorous plants. We've seen them in cartoons and learn about them in school. But there are many more like them out in the world, and different types with different mechanisms of trapping their prey. However, it takes a very long time for them to digest their food. It would take them weeks to just digest just the tip of a human finger. If we are alive when they chomp down on our finger, by the time they start to break the finger down, we would have already healed. So, their choice of prey is usually insects because they're easier to digest, and preferably dead ones so they can't heal themselves. Welcome to another episode of Forever Green. Today, we're going to look at 10 plants that eat animals. But first, why do they eat animals? Well, carnivorous plants derive their energy from photosynthesis, but get their nutrition from animals and insects. They tend to grow in areas with poor soil quality, so we could forgive them for turning carnivorous due to the lack of nutrition from soil. Despite how little we learn of them, there are actually around 600 species of these plants, and it keeps increasing by three species every year. Large carnivorous plant. Number 10. The Tropical Pitcher Plant Also called the monkey cup, because the pitchers are used as drinking cups by monkeys. No, don't worry, they're too big to be eaten by the pitcher plant. This plant is fairly common too, but not as common as Venus flytraps. There are more than 100 species of pitcher plants around the world. The main thing that distinguishes this plant from other carnivorous plants is its size. The pitchers of this plant can reach over a foot in height making it ideal for capturing and digesting insects, lizards, and amphibians. Animals are attracted to the sweet-scented nectar, and once they fall into the pitcher, digesting them can take up to two months. For most species, dissolved insects provide them with the nitrogen they need, but some other species get creative. One species of pitcher plant, the Nepenthes ampullaria, catches falling leaves, which produces nitrogen as it decomposes. I guess technically, that doesn't make these specific plants carnivorous. They are, nevertheless, in the pitcher plant family. Number 9. Cobra Lily It's a pretty name, for a very devious and cruel plant. An even more beautiful name is Darlingtonia californica, which is the scientific name for the cobra lily. Again, may we add, dangerous plant. The cobra lily is named that way because it looks like a cobra snake is about to strike. It is a rare plant native to cold water bogs in Oregon and Northern California. It is a sweet scent to lure in animals, but that's not why we call it cruel. The insides of this plant have numerous see-through false exits that exhausts its desperate and terrified victims as they try to escape. Like a house of mirrors, but if the house was eating you, I'm just glad humans aren't one of their preys. Oddly, scientists haven't found the natural pollinators of this plant. Surely some insect must gather its pollen or it wouldn't exist. Number 8. The Portuguese Sundew For such dangerous plants, they sure have really pretty names. The Portuguese Sundew grows in nutrient-poor soil along the coasts of Spain, Portugal, and Morocco, which is the reason it feeds on insects. Like most other carnivorous plants, it attracts bugs with its sweet aroma and traps them with a sticky substance called mucilage on its leaves. The more they struggle, the more ensnared they become and ultimately die from suffocation or exhaustion. The plant will then secrete enzymes which dissolve the insects and release the nutrients, which are then absorbed by the plant. Number 7. The Australian Sundew Plants are not generally known for their quick movements, but the Australian sundew wastes no time in snapping up any unfortunate prey that happens to wander about. This plant sets a different trap from most other plants. See the raindrops on the leaves? Well, that's not water. It's a sticky glue-like substance that traps insects that believe it's water. The insects trigger the touch-sensitive tentacles and get catapulted right into the plant's digestive mouth. The tentacles then move the prey down to the leaf trap, and enzymes digest the insect into nutrients for the plant. This is nothing. As you keep going, these plants get more dangerous, and number one will shock you. 
Number 6. Oridula These plants are native to South Africa and they come with a little twist. They don't digest the insects they trap with its sticky hairs. Instead, it outsources the job to a bug species called Pemeridia roridulae, or informally known as assassin bugs, with which it has a symbiotic relationship. These bugs don't get stuck to the leaves of the roridula plants because they are covered with a thick, greasy layer. When other insects get trapped by the plant, the assassin bugs swarm to the prey and stab it, then suck out its insides. Pretty gruesome, but that's not the squeamish part. In return for trapping the insect for the assassin bug, the plant gets the excreted waste of the bug, which is especially rich in nutrients that the plant absorbs. That's... nice? I, I guess? Number 5. Water Wheel Plant You could say this is the aquatic version of the Venus flytrap. They share a common ancestor, a carnivorous plant that lived way back in the beginning of the Cenozoic era. Its trap is arranged in whorls around a free-floating stem, hence the name, and this is one of the carnivorous plants capable of lightning fast movement. When it has locked on its prey, the traps of the plant shut in as little as one hundredth of a second. It has no roots and floats on the surface of lakes, enticing insects with its small traps. Each trap is surrounded by four and six six to eight millimeter long bristles, which prevent triggering of traps by the debris in the water. This species is also something of a global citizen. It is one of the largest and most disconnected distributions of any flowering species and grows in more than 40 countries across four continents, from the cold, subarctic region of North Russia to the warmer southern coasts of Australia. Despite this, the waterwheel plant is an endangered species, declining over the last century, and grows only in shallow and acidic waters of nutrient-poor swamps. Before we move on, here's a quick challenge for you. If you can leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications in less than 5 seconds, you will have 10 years of amazing luck. Hurry up and try it. It actually works. Number 4. Big Floating Bladderwort Well, I guess we're done with the pretty names. The Big Floating Bladderwort is also an aquatic carnivorous plant that is native to the coastal plains of the United States. They eat snails, slugs, and small fish. It's quite a nuisance, actually, because these plants are mat-forming. That is, they have creeping stems that grow in a trail and spread out to produce a mat-like cover. It's also quite problematic, as this is an invasive species. Studies done in the Adirondack Mountains of New York showed that the presence of these species caused major changes in nutrient cycling, sediment chemistry, and overall productivity of the area. But it seems we have found a use for them. Their leaves, when dried, serve as medicinal tea which help treat kidney stones, spasms, fluid retention, and aid in weight loss. It is sometimes also applied to the skin directly for burns and swelling. Number 3. The Corkscrew Plant If you saw this plant out in the wild, you wouldn't understand why it's called a corkscrew plant, or why it's considered carnivorous. It has small, non-carnivorous leaves on the soil surface to help with photosynthesis, but it has corkscrew roots. These roots are long, pale and resemble tree roots, and trap microorganisms found in soil. The roots have a groove that allow organisms to travel up the root, but it's a one-way travel because very tiny hairs make sure that the organism travels only upwards. Once it reaches the base of the plant, the prey has no choice but to enter the chamber where it is slowly digested. There are about 30 species of the corkscrew plant, and they grow in wet, terrestrial, and semi-aquatic environments in Africa and Central and South America. We're now going to take a quick break to check out this week's subscriber pick. If you find a weird or bizarre photo you just can't explain, send it over to us and we'll investigate. Now, let's take a look at this one. A kitten in a Venus flytrap. Well, like we discussed before, Venus flytraps can't digest anything too big. The trap would barely shut around the tip of a human finger, let alone an entire kitten. They can only digest tiny, dead insects. We're calling it, folks. This one's a fake. Sorry, but there is a plant that can eat prey larger than insects. We'll discuss that in a minute. Let's look at number two, the Venus flytrap. 
we can't talk about carnivorous plants and not include this little guy. Yep, little. Contrary to what you might have seen in cartoons and movies, Venus flytraps are actually quite small. They're a half a foot in length, and the sticky eyelid traps, which look really long, are only about an inch long. They're creepier than you expect, actually. If ever you magically turn into a fly and get caught in the trap, remember, not to panic. If you stay very, very still, the trap will open the next morning and you could fly out. Fighting your way out will only quicken the digestion process, because the more you struggle, the more it tells the plant how vigorously to kill you. If you're trapped, the plant will take a few days to digest you, and a week later, the trap is laid for another insect. Here's something you probably didn't know. Because Venus flytraps take a very long time to digest their food, they can't risk closing their traps for debris. To cut down on false alarms, this plant will snap shut only if an insect touches two different interior hairs in the course of 20 seconds. Another thing you probably didn't know is that each time the trap shuts, its lifespan gets shorter. When you're told not to touch a Venus flytrap, it's not for your safety, because you'll be completely unharmed. But the plant can only take about 10 false alarms before it dies. So next time you see one, resist the urge to poke your finger into it and just keep walking. Before we reveal number one, be sure to check out other amazing videos on our channel and give us a like if you enjoyed this video so far. Tell us in comments which one of these you like the most and why. Let's take a look at the number one, Nepenthes Raja. Nepenthes raja is the largest of the pitcher plants, and it's also the largest carnivorous plant in the world. Raja in Hindi means king, and this plant is often referred to as king of the pitcher plants. The plant is essentially a trap filled with up to three and a half liters of water and two and a half liters of digestive fluid. When insects fall in, they are unable to escape and are almost instantly digested by the plant. But that's not why the Nepenthes raja is in the number one spot. While insects, particularly ants, are a staple for this plant, the larger ones catch bigger prey. On many occasions, people have found rats, half-digested inside the pitchers, and even birds, lizards, and frogs. In addition to that, the Nepenthes raja has an interesting relationship with tree shrews. Over the years, they have evolved to entice these squirrel-like, insectivorous tree dwellers. Their shape and size force the shrews to defecate directly into the plant's cups, providing them with the nitrogen they need. This also helps shrews who prefer to mark their feeding territory. Okay, now I have two reasons not to go anywhere near them. Many of these plants are kept by hobbyists. Are you planning to keep any of these plants at home? It's a good way to get rid of bugs. Let us know in the comments below. Well, that's it for the top 10 plants that eat animals. If you like this video, check out our video on the 10 most beautiful insects on planet Earth. Insects you definitely don't want caught by these plants. Thank you for watching Forever Green, and we'll be back with another countdown video soon. Until then, goodbye.